good morning everyone i welcome you all for uh, today's session on projection of solids today we are solving a problem on a cone and the problem statement on this cone goes like this a cone of 50 mm base diameter and 60 mm axis length rests on hp on one of its generators draw its projection when the axis is inclined to vp at 30 degree when i read the question it is understood that it is resting where it is resting it is resting on hp and they have told us it is resting on one of its generator a cone means we don't have any uh, thing on uh, any corner on the top view or on the bottom base of this uh, cone so what we do is we just uh, have a imaginary corner and we talk about those generators so let's uh, begin with the solution i have a xy line uh, right down my vertical plane and horizontal plane then as it is said it is resting on one of its end generator so i am going to draw a circle cone means the base of that cone will always be a circle so i'm going to draw a circle of base 50 mm because it is given in the problem of diameter 50 mm so i'm going to draw a circle such a way that the diameter of this circle is 50 mm i'm going to draw a circle i repeat i'm going to draw a circle such a way that the diameter of this circle is 50 mm then what i do is i need to have the projectors so what i do is i divide this circle i divide this circle into eight parts what i'm going to do is first i'm going to draw this line the diameter of the line then this line that is one horizontal and one vertical line when i draw one horizontal and one vertical line i'm going to divide it into 1 2 3 and 4 parts then what i am going to do is i am going to draw a diameter at 45 degree from here at 45 degree from here i am going to draw a line in such a way that it cuts this line uh, this whole uh, circle into exactly half and i am going to draw one more diameter which is running from the center point from here that means i'm going to divide this whole circle into eight parts that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 you can do it as many as you want i can again divide this these uh, lines again but uh, the more i divide the more will be complicated to draw but uh, the more accuracy i get so what i do is i'm just dividing it into simple eight parts then i'm going to name it starting from the uh, a and, and i'm going to name it in anti clockwise direction it is a p c d e f g and h i'm going to name these end projectors with starting from a to h then i am going to name the center point as o1 and o2 o1 is the apex o2 is the center of this uh, circle then i am going to just project this uh, line where i have a projector here a this side b and h are coinciding with each other so it will be a straight line c and d are coinciding with a straight line it will be a single line d and f are coinciding with each other so it will be a single line once i get it i'm going to have a axis the length of the axis in this problem it is given as 60 mm so i'll be having a 60 mm axis length then i'm going to dimension the axis i'm going to draw the axis line with the one small and one large uh, dotted lines then i'm going to draw the end projectors and i'm going to complete this uh, triangle i'm going to figure have a thicker line on the outside uh, triangle and the inside these uh, 
are the projectors which I'm just projecting it for my simplicity case. So these will not be thicker lines, only the outside part. For us, a cone is very important. This is not a corner, nor this is a corner for a cone. In all the other cases, we used to have a corner and we used to have the pyramid. In the pyramid, what from the apex to the base corner, there was a slant edge joining from the apex to the base corner. But since this is a cone, there will not be any slant edges. There are only the uh, generators which run from the apex to the uh, corner and it looks like a pyramid itself. But it is not a pyramid and we don't have any base corners here. I have a circle at this end at the bottom. So it looks just, it looks like a triangle and this triangle, again, I'm going to name it where A dash it is visible, B dash is visible, C dash is visible, D dash is visible and E dash is visible. So A, B, C, D and E. Whatever I have on this below hemisphere, that is A, B, C, D, and E, these uh, corners for me, these points are visible when I'm seeing from this arrow mark. When I see it from this arrow mark, these corners are visible. So I, I don't call it as a corner, I just call it as a point, that is A, B, C, D, and E. So they are outside the bracket A dash, B dash, C dash, D dash, and E dash. Then I have H coinciding with B, C coinciding, G coinciding with C, and F coinciding with D. So H dash, G dash, and F dash are within the bracket. Also, from the top view, from the front view, O1 dash is visible, and O2 dash will not be visible. So again, it is in the bracket. The next part of the problem is, it is lying on one of its generator on HP. One of the generator means from O1 dash to E dash or from O1 dash to A dash. One of the generator means what? It is nothing but from O1 dash to E dash and O1 dash to E dash. Either it has to lie on O1 to A dash or from O1 dash to E dash. That is on my xy line. So what I do anywhere on this xy line, what I do is I measure from O1 to E dash. I measure from O1 to E dash, that is from O1 to E dash, I measure, I cut this arc. It is again the same type of a pyramid resting on one of its slant edge. So I'm going to make it, uh, I'm going to draw in such a way that I measure from O1 dash to E dash, that is from O1 dash to E dash on my XY line. Then I have to find out one point that is point A dash here. So what I do, I measure from O1 dash to A dash. I measure it with the help of a compass and from O1 dash to A dash, I measure it, draw the arc. Similarly, from E dash to A dash, I measure from E dash to A dash I measure, I cut down the arc. With this, I get three points. I draw a complete triangle. That is, three points are what for me? This is O1 dash, this is E dash, and this is A dash. Then what I do on this baseline, I have another three points. That is D dash, O2 dash, as well as B dash. So from E, I measure the distance from D dash. From E, I measure the distance E dash, cut the arc here. As well as from E, I measure O2 dash. From E, I measure O2 dash. So from E, I measure O2 dash, I cut the arc. On the same background, I measure from E to B dash. I measure it from this corner to this B dash. So from E dash to B dash, I measure it, I draw the lines. Again, this is my axis line, which I'm going to draw it. These are the projectors, uh, generators, which run from the apex to the division of this cone. So I'm just uh, drawing these uh, generators from the apex to some corners of the uh, 
uh, cone which we have divided for our simplicity case. Then I'm going to name it as it is in this triangle. Once I do it, I'm going to project it sideways from A to B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. Then I'm going to then I'm going to project it from the upwards, that is A dash, B dash, C dash, D dash, and E dash, along with that F dash g dash and h dash when i have a from here and a coming from here then i have b coming from here and b coming from this end then c from this end c from this end these are the points which are coinciding from the projections of the sideways and the bottom base bottom base once i get it i'm going to name it name these points that is a b c d e f g and h once i get it i'm going to draw a ellipse joining these all corners i'm going to join draw the ellipse joining all these corners i repeat i'm going to join draw ellipse joining all these corners then i'm going to uh, draw the, the axis line and draw the end projectors draw the end projectors that is from g to o1 and o1 to c all the in between uh, lines whatever i have i'm not going to draw it because to have this ellipse here in this phase, I have divided this circle into the apex to all these corners because cone will never be divided into any parts. It is a cone is nothing but it is a circle and this circle for our simplicity case, this circle converting this circle to an ellipse in this diagram, I need to know where those points are because of that what we did was we divided this circle into small small parts that is eight parts we had divided and i have got the ellipse in this case and i'm going to join only the end projectors whatever it is outside parts then i have a axis inclined to vp i have a axis inclined to vp again when i see the axis it is nothing but I have to check the length of the axis, whether it is the same or whether it is varying. When I see the axis in the first diagram and I see the axis in the fourth diagram. When I see the axis in the first diagram and see the axis in the fourth diagram, again it is varying. Since it is varying, what I have to do, I have to use the locus method. To use the locus method, I have to check whether I have appears to be in the question. Again, I go back to the question, just check out whether I have appears to be or not. If I have appears to be, whatever is there in the fourth diagram, the same diagram I'm going to draw on this 30 degree line. I'm not going to use the locus method. And if I don't have appears to be, then I'm going to use the locus method. And when I go back and check with, to the, with the question, I don't have appears to be words. So in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line of 30 degrees and use the locus method. For which I'm going to draw a line of axis 30 mm, sorry, 30 degrees. And it is inclined to 30 degrees to VP. Once I draw it, I'm going to measure the true length of the axis, which is there in the first figure. The true length of the axis, which is there in the first figure. I'm going to measure the true length of the axis, which is there in the first figure, <coughs> which is nothing but 60 mm. So anywhere on this 30 degree line, I'm going to measure that is from O1 to O2, which is nothing but the true length of the axis. I'm going to cut this 30 degree line somewhere. 
then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the locus line. I'm going to draw the locus line, which is nothing but parallel to my xy line. Which is nothing but parallel to my xy line. Now, locus will always be parallel to my xy line. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from O1 to O2, O1 to O2 in this fourth figure. O1 to O2 in this fourth figure. That is from O1 to O2 I'm going to measure in this fourth figure. I'm going to cut this down. When I'm going to cut this down, I'm going to place this whole thing. That is O1 to O2 I'm going to cut it measuring from this fourth figure. That is from here O1 to O2. Once I do it, I'm going to place this whole cone on this new axis line, which is nothing but inclined to angle beta. I'm going to place this whole cone on this new line, which is inclined to VP with an angle of beta. So I'm going to place this whole cone on this new axis line and i have already got these lines this will be again done by a drawing a rectangle here drawing a rectangle here and that rectangle will be placed on this line again here and getting all the points generators while drawing it once that is done i'm going to name all the generators which we have uh, developed for our simplicity case then i'm going to project the whole things upwards from a a to a this is from here to here then i am going to project b to b then c to c then d to d e to e then f to f g to g then x to h and I'm, I have got all the projectors. I'm going to join it with the arcs and uh, it will be a ellipse again. I'm going to join this ellipse again and it will look like a ellipse again. I'm going to join all these end projectors. Then I'm going to project O1 to O1 as well as O2 to O2. Then I'm going to draw the axis line and I'm going to join the end projectors. End projectors are nothing but drawing a tangent to this ellipse. I'm going to just draw a tangent to this ellipse that is from this end to this end. Once I do it, this is all about uh, my problem which we have done. This is all about uh, my problems, which I have, uh, we have done. Anybody have any doubts in this problem? Anyone? Okay then, let's proceed to the next problem. Next problem is on a hexahedron. Next problem is a hexahedron. Hexahedron is nothing but it is a cube. Hexahedron is nothing but again it is a cube. So let's uh, quickly go through the problem statement. A hexahedron of 30 mm sides is resting on one of its corners on HP such that one of its solid diagonals is perpendicular to VP. Draw the 
projections of the solid i repeat the problem statement please go through this problem statement very 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 carefully a hexahedron of 30 mm sides is resting on one of its corners on hp such that one of its solid diagonal is perpendicular to vp draw the projections of the solid it is one of the peculiar problem where the second phase of the problem and the third phase of the problem they have not given any inclinations with respect to vp and hp there is no angle given in this problem as well as they have told it is a hexahedron when i understand it is a hexahedron hexahedron it is nothing but it is a cube it is a cube i repeat hexahedron is nothing but it is a cube most of us what we do is hexa means we start drawing again a six uh, sided pyramid or a six sided prism that is a hexagonal prism or a hexagonal pyramid which is completely wrong hexahedron is nothing but it is a cube whatever the base length is the same will be the height of the uh, cube so i don't have even in this problem we don't have the axis length why whatever the length of the base is the height of the uh, prism will be also the same so when i read the question let's begin with part by part when i read the question it is resting on hp and on one of its corner so i need to draw a square such a way that it has to be a corner on my right hand side and it has to be a square a square on my hp on my hp and it has to be on my right hand side so what i do is i just proceed to the solution quickly it is x y line vp hp then it is resting on a corner i'm going to draw a, a square of such a way that i get a corner on my right hand side it is a square of 30 to have a corner on my right hand side because it is resting on a corner then it is i am going to dimension it is nothing but 30 mm p q r and s is the top base of the cube and a b c d is nothing but it is the bottom base of the cube then i am going to just find out the midpoint by joining the then i'm going to project all these uh, corners i'm going to have a axis i'm going to measure the axis length the axis length will be nothing but the same as the base length base edge length the axis length i repeat the axis length will be nothing but the same as the base edge length so it is nothing but 30 mm i'm going to complete this whole uh, figure it is a cube i'm having a cube i'm just projecting it then i'm going to name it it is p from here s from here and r from here they are visible and they will be within outside the bracket that is p dash s dash and r dash p dash s dash and r dash are outside the bracket and only this q is within the bracket because q is coinciding with s yes. then i have a dash is also visible b p dash is visible and c dash is visible so a dash d dash and c dash are outside the bracket inside the bracket i have only the b dash which is coinciding with d dash then i have a diagonal a solid diagonal solid diagonal is nothing but it is a line joining from one corner of the top base to the opposite corner of the bottom base solid diagonal is nothing but it is running from the top base to the bottom base 
if i call a diagonal diagonal if i call only a diagonal it is nothing but either i call it from a to c or b to d or i call it from p to r or q to s it is nothing but if i take to p to r that means it is nothing but the bottom top base if i take a to c that is nothing but it is only related to bottom base if i am talking about a to c and p to r p to r means it is only related to the top base and a to c means it is only related to the bottom base now if i talk about the solid diagonal if i start from the one top corner of this uh, top base it has to join the opposite corner of the bottom base if i start from p dash it has to join c dash that is what a solid diagonal is it has to start from the top base to a corner to the bottom base corner of the opposite side i cannot take from r dash to c dash i can take from r dash to a dash i can take it from r dash to a dash or i can take it from p dash to c dash or i can take it from p dash to c dash so i repeat solid diagonal is nothing but a line joining from one top corner one corner of the top base to the bottom corner opposite bottom corner of the bottom base that is from p dash to c dash or r dash to a dash so it is the, this line is nothing but a solid diagonal and they have told us that this solid diagonal has to be perpendicular perpendicular to bp it has to be perpendicular to bp only that is given so they have not given the second phase of the problem they have not given the second phase of the problem what we are going to do is first thing is i am going to make this solid diagonal first parallel to hp then i can convert that parallel to hp solid diagonal to perpendicular to hp solid diagonal vp solid diagonal so for our simplicity case this will be the just imaginary part of the second phase what i'm going to do in the second phase is i'm going to make this solid diagonal parallel to hp so what is that solid diagonal it is p dash to c dash is my solid diagonal and this p dash to c dash has to be parallel to my hp here it is parallel to this x y line parallel to hp means it has to be parallel to uh, hp what for that what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw a line here i'm going to draw a line that is from a dash to some point here this line will be nothing but it has to be a straight line i'm talking about i'm going to draw from a dash from a dash i'm going to draw a line such that it is making 90 degrees to this p dash to c dash from p dash to c dash is a diagonal from p dash to c dash i'm going to draw a line and that is a imaginary line which is making an angle of 90 degrees that is a perpendicular line joining this corner a dash why i have to do it because i don't know what is this distance from x y line to draw this p dash c dash i don't know what is this distance to draw for that what i'm going to do is i have to draw this line a imaginary line such a way that it is a perpendicular line joining this corner a dash and with that i'm going to draw this line with that i'm going to understand what what height i have to draw this line once i know i i'm joining a line from here i can understand from p dash to c dash i know that is i'm going to have this bottom uh, triangle i know p dash c dash there is no doubt of finding out a dash so from here i cut this arc or from here i cut this arc i get a dash here or already i have drawn a line here so for which i'll be getting a dash i'm going to just join these whole things this whole thing i'm going to join it 
and uh, once i do it i'm going to just uh, name whatever the same namings whatever is there in the front view once that is done i'm going to project it sideways then i'm going to project it downwards then i'm going to draw the top base first that is the p q r and s this is the top a dash a b c d then i'm going to have a b c d namings with it i'm going to complete the outside part first i'm going to complete the outside part projecting b from here b from here c from here c from here then r from here r from here and as well as d from here and d from here i have a inner a coming from this corner and a coming from this corner again for line going out the edges going out from this corner will be hidden lines so i have a dash to p dash a dash to p dash that is a to p is hidden as well as again a to d and a to p line going out from this corner is a to d as well as a to p and a to p so a to p a to b and a to d will be a hidden line once i do it i have a diagonal the same diagonal is perpendicular to bp now i have a solid diagonal which is parallel to bp that is nothing but p to c see this p to c is a line which is parallel again you can understand it is parallel to my uh, this x y line now this p i am going to draw this whole cube such a way that this p to c is nothing but perpendicular to this x y line p to c i am going to draw such a way that it is perpendicular to the x y line so i am going to take p and q here this is my p as well as this is my c so when i see that namings i'm going to draw this line again in such a way that this p and c are i'm going to draw in such a way that this solid diagonal that is p and c is making a 90 degrees to this x y line such a way that it is perpendicular to my vp that solid once i do it then i'm going to project p q r and s first because it is a bottom base and it is visible uh, in this case no, not in this case in this uh, diagram it is at the bottom so when i'm seeing it from the bottom p q r s is visible so p dash q dash r dash and s dash i'm going to draw it first then join it then i'm going to project a a dash b dash then c dash then d dash then i'm going to join the uh, longer edges which run from the uh, one base edge to the other base edge i'm going to complete the outside part first and i'm going to find out the farthest corner from this end the farthest corner is c so from c all the lines going out will be hidden so from c it is going to from c to b c to d c to b and c to d is uh, hidden again and as well as one more line going out is c to r so c to r will be hidden so again when i talk about this problem with this we complete this uh, solution for this problem uh, which is a hexahedron and it is one of the peculiar problem in this solids